Hello there, I'm Aldra Hill, and welcome back to Hoi 4, New England. It's a beautiful, weird, deep forest green color. Not sure about what's going on there, but it's 1938 right now, and we are waiting. <laughs> that's, the, that's the rough plan. We've got these safe houses, and I don't quite understand how what it means. But I think it, it's like investing in economy? Okay, so that's made a line. There's now a line between us. That's cool. It's like making lines. That's really cool. Okay, it's like expanding outwards because I've invested guns into it. Okay. And that is going to gradually, I think, give us manpower and guns. Which is awesome. Just doing my very best to attempt to put as many divisions on a weird little front line that we have. Central line to Mississippi and Kentucky. Awesome. I'm hoping that the Great Depression is getting a bit easier. A long dispute settled. Mapmakers rejoice as the long-standing border between Vermont and New Hampshire has finally been settled. It fixes the boundary between the two states for 200 miles along the Connecticut River. Okay. The chief of cartographic section said that with some map changes in the past 20 years have been significant enough to change the geographic text, obscure enough to mostly only affect scientists, road builders, and engineers. Most of these changes happen as a result of rivers changing course. Following the fixture of the Vermont-New Hampshire border, the Geographical Survey began to look for other erratic changes. <laughs> New Hampshire and Vermont, four people moved between them. Why? That's so stupid. I love it. That's so weird. Okay. Did you become freed over time? There is a way to free ourselves. Okay. I'll probably train these guys, shouldn't I? Yeah. Oh, whoops. I thought I had these guys on infinite. Let's try that again. So these guys are actually better. We'll, we'll upgrade them over time. I think there's a focus to that, yeah. Working Secretary of the Interior, young Robert, oh, young Robert Weaver has pushed the government to reduce the prices of cost of living. The approval draft of the United States Housing Program. But a roof for every head and a smuggling group has been apprehended. Wow, wow. Right. What does that mean? Can I reinvest? Do I have to, to wait? Fix it? I don't really understand what that means. Weapons cash looted. Okay, so I get like 30 guns or something. All right. Or completing focus in the storage you do. I'll give the modifier faster. Oh, God, I have a focus I haven't done. Welfare for work. Daily political account for gain, consumer factories, and construction pit. I'm just trying to get rid of this damn malice, dude. Come on. Let's go. Get rid of the malice, please. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Okay. Ba -da -ba -ba. Mm. Dutch Revolution. Oh, dear. What do you do in the Netherlands? Can't you be like the glorious New England? What is also the borders of New England? Like the state of is the state of Buffalo, the the state of Albany. What? The state of Albany. Oh, it's the invention of chocolate chip cookies. Yes, in particular because of the towel house, renowned throughout the country for delicious recipe, the chocolate chip cookies. Except of course she didn't invent them. Born roof. Oh no, she did. This one did. Sorry. Homec teacher. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Cooked all the food at the inn and a cookie under the national fame. She had to chop bits from a Nestle semi sweet chocolate bar into a cookie. Of course, incorrectly said the movement was a mistake. She claimed she intentionally sought to create a cookie with a delicious bite of chocolate. It's reached Soldier Station in Massachusetts, many of whom have written letters and requesting it from their families. Ah. Agreeing to give Nestle. Oh, yeah, this is a wonderful line. They infatuated the cookie because she agreed to give it to Toll House, to Nestle, the rights to the Toll House cookie name for $1 and a lifetime supply of Nestle. 
I mean, it's so... It's just a perfect little story of, I think, cuteness, but also absolute idiocy. This woman literally invented the chocolate chip cookie, and it became so popular that Nestle wanted to buy the rights to it. And her first thing was to go, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'll take it for a dollar and a lifetime supply of chocolate, like a Willy Wonka character. And, you know, she gets it, but she doesn't become a bajillionaire like she should be. She just gets, like, a lot of chocolate. Like, I don't even think it was that much. I don't even think... Also, it was a lifetime supply of Nestle chocolate as well. Which is just sad. I guess they were the main provisioners of, like, baked goods at the time. What was her name? Ruth something. I just think... Like, that's just, that's just not good economic decision making. I want to see. I want to, I'm looking her up. I, I don't even care that I'm playing a game. I'm looking her up. I'm not pausing the recording. I'm continuing to go. Let me just pick my freaking focus here. Oh yeah, steel mills of Maine. Give me some of that steel. Right. God, soldiers got this. You know the Toll House cookie? A lifetime supply of Nestle. Right. She died in 1970. She lived for 40 more years. No, so she got nothing. She just carried on. I gotta say, that's like the dumbest person in existence. To invent chocolate chip cookies and accept a lifetime supply of mediocre chocolate in return. Come on. Sort yourself out. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't get off. I actually also knew this. I, I knew about this already. I read this years ago, but this just reminded me of it. Though I didn't realize that was why they were called Toll House, because she read a Toll House. I thought that was just like the old brand name. I don't know. I, just, I don't like the idea of someone inventing something wonderful and then a big company making bajillions out of it and she just kind of goes through the rest of her life kind of vaguely poor. Thickens me. <laughs> Thickens me. They get oil. You have a lot of ruins who waste all the money they want to become poor afterwards. Yeah, I. but I don't know. That's kind of like gambler philosophy. You know, you get all your money, you gamble it away. That's stupid. Absolutely. But it's you can at least see where the science of it in the brain. Like You can see the fundamental problem with the decision making. You can see how they've become corrupted by the sudden win and our monkey litter, lizard brains can't comprehend this large quantity of cash. And so they flip out and they just maybe some people have poor impulse control. My game is frozen and crashed. Oh, dear. All right, the game's crashed, so I'm gonna have to reload this. But you know what? You can see my point is you can see how they get poor impulse control. But when it comes to someone inventing something in their own creation and then being like, Hey, can we buy it? And they go, Yeah, here you go. A buck and a lot of chocolate. Is a lifetime supply? You think that would mean like, hey, I want chocolate, and they fly in like a delivery of chocolate? Thank you, Leonard T for the for the follow. I really appreciate that. But no. It's not like chocolate on demand. It, they, they just give you like a ratio amount of chocolate that they expect people to find sufficient for themselves. Like like one, two bars a week for 30, like for like your average life expectancy. They work out like, oh, you should probably die by the time you're 70, right? So here's like two bars, 52, 104 times by another 30 years so here's 3,000 bars of chocolate if you gave me 3,000 bars of chocolate I would not last until I died at age 77 I'm not dying at age 77 first of all but it would not last that period of time it would let's be honest last like a couple years because you'd probably give quite a lot of them away you know you'd be that guy or Ruth so that woman who people like would come around your house and you'd be like, aren't you the chocolate lady? And you'd be like, yes, I am the chocolate lady. And you'd just throw chocolate at them. Because you had that. At, you'd be like giving them out to like children as they walk past. Maybe I wouldn't be, but <laughs> I wouldn't be doing that. But other people would. What I got to do and talk about. Okay, I think it's worked now. I think we're good. We're back in. 
see if we can uh, continue to play. We're doing the Steel Mills of Maine, which is nice. Crashes again. I will quietly seethe. I really love this, like, rail connections. Oh! Yeah, no, it's definitely just crashed again. Well, that's upsetting. I'm going to have to call this episode here, then. I'm very sorry to say that. It's just completely crashed. Um, I'll be back again. Um, I hope I can get this fixed. I hope it's not going to have a problem. We'll have to see. Make sure you do leave a like and a comment down below on the video. Let me know what you think of the series so far. And if you know of a way to fix it. I was Aldrich and I continue to be. Thank you so very much for watching. Check out Discord as well to join the community. And check out my other channel, which is about books and cooking and my life and lifestyle. It's fun. I like it. Bye.